we're talking today to Sharon Ron. Sharon is a speech and language pathologist at the Maytab Center. Hi, Sharon. How are you? Great. How are you? Very well, thank you. Sharon, today we're going to talk about swallowing disorders. What is a swallowing disorder? Okay, a swallowing disorder is basically when something's wrong in one of the three stages of swallowing. The three stages of swallowing start with the oral stage, what happens in the mouth. You put food in your mouth, you start chewing, you mix the food with your saliva, you form that food into a bolus or a ball of food, and then you propel it backwards in a wave on your tongue. That's the first stage. The second stage of swallowing is the pharyngeal phase, in that phase, we have to get the food to go further down in the throat. And if you look over here, when I'm swallowing, you saw this go up and down. We have to have the food travel down the throat, but not into the open airway. So it's a very complicated phase where there's six actions that happen, one after another, very fast, within about one or two seconds, that protect your airway so that the food goes towards your stomach. And then the final stage of the swallow is the esophageal phase where the food goes into the esophagus. There's a sphincter at the top, a top tight muscle at the top that has to open and let the food pass through. Then there's this peristaltic wave, basically where the food passes down in a wave through the esophagus. And then there's another sphincter at the bottom, lets the food pass, go into the stomach. So a swallowing disorder is when there's a problem in any of these phases or a combination of these phases. It's really, really a complicated action that we totally don't think about, but there's a lot of places where things can go wrong. What are the potential complications of a swallowing disorder? That's a great question. There's there's really three categories of potential complications, and they're they're all pretty serious. The first and most serious is the medical complications. If somebody swallows the wrong way, meaning the food goes into their lungs, they can develop aspiration pneumonia. Another complication can be that the person will choke and not be able to breathe. Another complication would be malnutrition or dehydration. And all four of these complications can lead to death. So that's certainly the most important uh, and serious complication. But there are other complications of swallowing disorders. There's a financial complication where people who have swallowing disorders have longer hospital stays. They have more involved health care. They may need procedures done like putting in a nasogastric tube or a peg tube into their stomach. Um, and then the third section of complications would be quality of life complications. Someone who has a swallowing disorder may be restricted to eating certain types of food, certain consistencies of food, and that may lead to social isolation. Everybody's having a beautiful dinner, and they're having this pureed mush and thick liquids, and it can even lead to them not being able to eat at all if the speech therapist and the doctor determine that the patient has to be NPO, which means that they're not allowed to eat anything by mouth. Um, it's also more difficult for the caregivers and the family to take care of a person who has a swallowing disorder. So all three of these types of complications come into play. What are the causes of swallowing disorders? There's many, many, many causes. Um, the most common cause, in our practice we see adults, and the most common cause would be stroke. A stroke can be on the left side of the brain, the right side of the brain, subcortical brainstem, anywhere, and it can lead to different types of swallowing disorders that can be very serious. A stroke can cause the swallow to be slower and sluggish, or it can cause the swallow to be weak and not get all the food down. That's, I would say, the most common, and that's a neurological cause. And there's tons of neurological diseases that can lead to uh, swallowing disorders, also Parkinson's disease, dementia. Um, and those are, let's say, the most common ones that we see among adults, but there's lots of other causes. There can be um, a surgery that nicks a vocal fold um, can also cause a problem. Certain medications like anticonvulsants, antipsychotics can cause swallowing disorders. There can be an obstruction or a structural problem like someone who has head and neck cancer, and that can cause uh, a swallowing disorder. There's really a lot of potential causes. It's pretty common um, among strokes especially and neurological diseases. Do swallowing disorders only affect adults and geriatrics? Absolutely not. 
There can be swallowing disorders among preemies, premature babies, um, children with cerebral palsy, also uh, kids who have cleft palate. And um, I work with adults, but speaking with a colleague of mine who works with kids, she had made the differentiation between that adults tend to have more neurological-based swallowing disorders where the actual muscles are not working properly, um, and that kids often have eating disorders, meaning that it's difficult for them to change to new textures when they're little tiny kids, um, although both adults and kids can have both types of disorders, eating and swallowing. Who evaluates and treats swallowing disorders? That would be us. That would be the speech therapist or the speech pathologist. Um, but it really is a team effort. The primary care physician is involved. Uh, there may be an ear, nose, and throat doctor who's involved in doing some of the evaluation or a gastroenterologist who's involved. Even the um, radiologist may do an exam with us in radiology to check on swallowing. Also, the physical therapist may be involved in proper seating for the patient while they're eating. The occupational therapist may be involved in hand-to-mouth issues. And very much part of the team of swallowing is the patient themselves, the caregiver, and the family. But primarily, it's the purvey of the speech pathologist who evaluates and treats swallowing disorders. So tell me a little bit uh, briefly about the different treatments that you would use to treat a swallowing disorder. That's a great and complicated question to answer. Um, it depends on the source of the problem, meaning if you find that the problem is, I'll give you an example. People who have dementia, either Alzheimer's dementia or other types of dementia, they tend to fall apart in the first stage of the swallow. The reason is because the first stage of the swallow where you chew the food is the only of the three stages that's volitional, meaning you have to plan it, you have to make it happen. Um, in a stroke, as opposed to dementia, it's usually the pharyngeal phase. It can also be the oral phase and the pharyngeal phase and the esophageal, but the treatment would be different. So let's say that someone who has dementia and their problem is that they put food in their mouth and then they forget what to do with it. They forget to chew or to swallow or they refuse to open their mouth or they refuse to close their mouth. Um, then the treatment may be that you make the food what we would call more stimulable or, or have more stimulation to the patients so that they recognize that there's food in their mouth and that they do something to it. You may make the food very warm, very cold, very sweet, very sour, very salty, very spicy, just to increase their awareness that there's something in the mouth, as opposed to someone who has a stroke and has a muscle-based or a neurological-based swallowing disorder um, where their muscles are not working properly, they may need something to actually strengthen those muscles, and making the food hotter or colder wouldn't necessarily help them. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for talking to me today. A pleasure.